Yep, one too many. Well, thanks. <clears throat> I am delighted to be here. And, you know, you see at the top of this slide, <clears throat> excuse me, um, this is our team. This is the, the team of the uh, Forest Service Tribal Relations Program writ large. Not everybody is in on this picture, but this is mostly the regional tribal relations program managers across the country in the nine regions of the Forest Service and the Office of Tribal Relations. We have some folks from state and private forestry. We have folks from research and development and folks from national forest system because we cover the, the entire agency and the things we do. Uh, you'll see it's values-based, purpose-driven, relationship-focused. These are kind of phrases that we've been using within the Forest Service to talk about who we really are. And it got me to thinking about how do I introduce myself to folks? And it used to be I would introduce myself, hi, I'm Fred Clark, I'm the director of the Office of Tribal Relations for the US Forest Service. I don't do that anymore, at least I try not to do that. I do, kind of like, my name is Miskwasen, which is my Potawatomi name. It translates to Red Rock. I also, I am a citizen. I'm a citizen of the citizen Potawatomi nation. And then secondarily, you know, that's who I am, but then how I serve. And I serve as the director of the Office of Tribal Relations. We all have these roles, and it's really great when those roles correspond to your values and where you come from. It's really a good thing. And this group of people is fantastic to uh, work with in that context. But, um, you know, it's not all the team. Because we're all part of the team, right? So... The Seminole tribe welping, welcoming us here to their land because we're part of the team. Uh, other tribes, that's tribal leaders, tribal staff, folks from all over the country who work in forestry are coming together here. Other feds, uh, tribally supporting organizations, you've been hearing a lot about the great work that Intertribal Timber Council is doing for you, for your communities, for, for all of us, for the country, uh, in D.C. and all the places where people are. So we're all in this together, and that is the spirit of shared stewardship. We share the land. We work with each other to do, try to do a bigger picture of what's going on across the landscape. So I also want to recognize, you know, the Forest Service is a USDA agency, but there are other USDA agencies. Some of are represented here in the room today. And they have some really great programs that are available for tribes. The Forest Service often doesn't have money to work with tribes or specific authorities. We, now we have some new authorities, but they don't come funded. So that, you can turn to the other agencies like NRCS. I don't know if Barry's in the room or not today, Barry Hamilton, but they have 1.7 billion for environmental quality incentives program, or EQIP, this year, and it's going up to over 2 billion next year. Total in the farm bill, it's like 8 billion. So APHIS, and I see Carl Etzidi back in the back over here, they have $60 million available to combat invasive species. The Forest Service helps tribes a little bit through the BIA with invasive species, but APHIS is a great partner to work with. I also wanted to recognize that the work we do in forestry and in fire, it exists, all our natural resources work, exists in a bigger context, and that context has to do with our communities. Pressing native community needs around housing, around education, health, and safety, including the epidemic of missing and murdered Native American women across the country. So what we do is part of a bigger picture, and we need to do that together. I want to say especially thanks to my, most, my closest team. That's the Office of Tribal Relations in Washington, D.C. So we've got Rebecca Hill, Pam Williams, Angela Pittman, Alicia bell Sheeter, who's back in the back of the room here, Estelle Bowman, Chris, and Chris Keppel. A good bunch of folks. So this is what I want to talk about briefly. Uh, you've heard a lot of this already, so I'm going to go through part of these rather quickly. You've got a lot of numbers already about the budget. Um, already got introduced these ideas about some new authorities that we have to work with tribes. And then I want to talk about something you haven't heard about, and that's this 
tsunami of consultation opportunities, if you want to call them that, um, with some new authorities and changes to Forest Service policies. So start looking backwards. I can't help because I was an archaeologist for 20 years, so, you know, got to look backwards to know where we're coming from. 2.6 billion in 2018 spent by the Forest Service and 2.9 billion across all the federal agencies. 1.4 billion spent by states. Um, I don't have the numbers for tribes, but I know it's a lot. Of the 55,000 acres across the nation, uh, 5,629 were Forest Service fires. Over 9 million acres burned, 2.3 million acres of Forest Service land. 2.3 million acres. Remember those three large fires in California between the Thomas Fire, the Mendocino Complex, and the Cat Fire? That's a lot. A lot of land, a lot of resources, and a lot of lives lost. We don't want to do that again. Let's take a current look at 2019. I didn't want to use the same slides as everybody else, so I found a different one <laughs> to show this one. Okay, so it's a significant uh, fire potential especially on the coast, but not, not only there. So <clears throat> you already saw a picture of uh, Chief Christensen, so I'd, I thought I'd throw in a few words to go with that. So what Chief Christensen does in this quote, it says we're accountable. We're accountable not only for the outcomes, but we're accountable for how we spend the money. So we're trying to become more efficient and more effective in how we use the monies that we do get to get more work done on the ground and to do that in partnership with all y'all. So air tankers, we're up to 32 in 2019 versus 25 in 2018. Helicopters are up too, so we've got, no pun intended there, 104 uh, helicopters for exclusive use and up to 105 call when needed helicopters. Other resources include 10,000 agency firefighters, 900 engines, and 210 pieces of heavy equipment. So let's take a little look ahead at the 2020 budget, because what we have for 2020 budget is the president's budget. That means we don't really have a budget yet for 2020. Uh, congressional response, as you heard from Matt, is still developing. The authorities and the 2019 omnibus bill will help. And the fire funding fix, for example, reduces the risk of, somebody used the word fire, fire robbing. I think that might be more appropriate than transfer. House marks on fire preparedness and suppression are higher. Hazardous fuels are as well. And again, this helps set the stage for shared stewardship. <clears throat> While we don't have a budget, we do have some direction. So the House Appropriations Committee, for instance, says, okay, Forest Service, we want you to get out there, promote and expand the use of agreements with Indian tribes to protect Indian trust resources from catastrophic fire, insects, disease infestation, and other threats from adjacent federal lands as authorized by law. So what that really is doing is saying, okay, this is the purpose of the Tribal Forest Protection Act. So get out there and use that 638 authority, get out there and use that good neighbor authority, get those biomass projects going, and otherwise work with tribes to do, get more work done on the ground, protect tribal resources, both on and off the reservations and tribal lands. So 2020, fire preparedness, 1.3 million or billion. Suppression, just over a billion. Wildfire funding fix, cap adjustments are almost $2 billion. The cumulative, that's suppression plus the fix, is about $3 billion. Hazardous fuels is up to $450 million. So let's return back to the management side. This is just a map showing the expression of 193 million acres of National Forest System land. And you can just superimpose where your tribes are on that. So as was discussed before, there are two different pieces of legislation that modified two different things. One is the Farm Bill amended the Tribal Forest Protection Act and provided tribal use of good neighbor authorities. But then the Indian Energy Act 
again modified the uh, Tribal Forest Protection Act for the biomass projects. Now together, these form what Alicia El Sheeter is fond of calling the T3, the Tribal 3, big ones in the farm bill for us. And so for TFPA, we, we're gonna use contracts. We don't have the, the templates ready for that, but with ITC's help and tribe's help, we're working in that direction. We do now have um, the templates for the GNA agreements in place, and we'll see how that works when we apply for the on the biomass side. So we call this, uh, it is a year of implementation, figuring out our way of how we're gonna work together on this stuff. We're closely working closely with ITC. We're a year out of adaptive exploration and how we're gonna get this accomplished. Tribes are identifying biomass demonstration project locations with their forest service partners out in the field. At the same time, these templates and these mechanism things are happening at the Washington DC level and the regional level. So when these things finally come together, that's when the work is really gonna happen. I'm still hopeful we're gonna get some of this started fiscal year 19. So one thing we have to do is really work on getting the funding that's already available for the Forest Service put into these tribal projects. Because as I said before, these don't come with funding on their own. So again, the, the Tribal Good Neighbor Authority Agreement template is now available for use and there's a website that you can go to to find it. I just wanna run through these really quick. <clears throat> this is the far other farm bill provisions of interest um, to tribes, because all of these have the potential of affecting tribes either directly or indirectly. So the state and private forest land sale restoration program, promoting cross-boundary wildfire mitigation, water source protection program, watershed condition framework, healthy forest restoration act amendments, wood innovation grant programs, and resource advisory committees. I wanna talk about one in particular, uh, not because the authorization of the money, because there's $80 million, which actually doubled from the previous farm bill uh, for the Cooperative Forest Landscape Restoration Program, and it's for use on the national forest system. What I really wanted to bring this up to you today about is that they're looking for native representation on the FACA committee to figure out how this money is gonna get spent. So it's a great opportunity. The uh, outreach for participation in the committee is happening this month. Then over the next couple of months, they'll be analyzing that and making a recommendation to the secretary. So hopefully the FACA committee meets in November and December to make project recommendations to the Secretary of Agriculture. There's a lot in the Farm Bill that's gonna require consultation. We've already started doing tribal consultations. There was a big consultation in DC a few weeks ago, and that was the Farm Bill writ large across the USDA. So it included the Forest Service components, but that was just one aspect of it. And then the Forest Service did some listening sessions, did some webinars that tribes could call into to get more information about these things. The next opportunity for a tribal consultation, and that's again gonna be Farm Bill writ large, is gonna be at NCAI in a couple of weeks in uh, Reno, Nevada. So on the 26th of June, there's gonna be a listening session about Farm Bill issues. And then the tribal consultation is the next day on the 27th. That's only the tip of the iceberg because there is just a whole lot of things that are coming down the pike uh, towards the tribes from the Forest Service because of changes in regulations, uh, handbook and manual directives, uh, publications, you name it, it just all these things are happening. <clears throat> so uh, tribes are gonna get bombarded even more than usual <laughs> with stuff from the Forest Service. So locatable minerals, oil and gas resources, fire and aviation, management, um, national phasing programmatic agreements under the National Historic Preservation Act, leasing of Forest Service administrative sites, forest products modernization, and NEPA regulations. I'm gonna spend a few minutes on the NEPA part, but let me also mention the leasing of Forest Service administrative sites. This means that there are administrative sites that the Forest Service doesn't use anymore. Tribes can actually lease these um, facilities for tribal use 
and it doesn't have a time limit. And you can use uh, in-kind um, um, donations of time or material or whatever to help on that lease as well. It's a very, it's a great opportunity. So let's talk about NEPA a little bit. So Chief Christensen announced yesterday that the Forest Service is proposing a rule that modernizes the processes for environmental analysis and decision making. And it's the first significant rule change in NEPA procedures in more than a decade. So which the main idea is that we got to change. We're taking too much time, too much money, doing too much work that doesn't need to be done in getting our NEPA analysis and decision making completed. So we're going to take um, um, some lessons from other agencies like BLM, for instance, and apply, apply these things as we move ahead. So the rule is going to be a key component of how we try to streamline the work we do. But it's not going to do be done, supposedly, in a way that hampers the quality of the analyses, that uh, does not use science-based analysis, because it's still all science-based, making decisions that honor our environmental and stewardship responsibilities. So that's a lot coming down the pike. And so I'll be around the rest of the day, and we can, if you uh, want to talk some more about it, I'll be around. Just uh, in closing, I just wanted to mention that we've updated our Tribal Connections GIS map viewer that shows National Forest System land, Tribal Trust lands, and lands that were ceded by tribes through treaties. So we've added uh, executive order tribes. For instance, uh, here, this is just a screenshot from the, the, um, the website, and you can just pull up the treaty immediately for 1823 with Florida tribes, where we are now. That's all I have to say for today. Thanks.